As we saw in Chapter 1059, Kobe was kidnapped by the Blackbeard Pirates. Certainly, we were confident that Garp would embark on a mission to rescue Kobe. Subsequently, in another chapter, we witness Garp's appeal to Dahl for reinforcement, driven by his determination to save Kobe from potential harm at Hachinasu. However, Dahl's hands are tied due to the G-14 base Marine's commitment to support Admiral Kizaru and CP-0 on Egghead Island. However, Garp embarks on the mission accompanied by Helmapu and Hibari, ensuring he doesn't venture forth alone. Together, they set out to rescue Kobe with unwavering resolve. Now let's dive into the epic showdown. Garp, the marine hero, facing off against the menacing Blackbeard Pirates, a battle you won't want to miss. But before we continue with the clash between Garp and Marine vs. Blackbeard Pirates, be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. Do it right now. I am waiting for you to do that. Chapter 1080 start with Hachinasu Island, also known as Pirate Island, where we get to know that Captain Kobe has just escaped. Scenes shift to a group of pirates where they weren't much bothered by his escape. After all, Kobe was just a captain rank, not at the rank of rear admiral. Among them, one pirate ponders about the bounty Cross Guild has placed on Kobe's head, wondering if it's a sizable amount. Kobe's bounty is revealed to be a staggering 500 million berries, awarding him a rare five-star rating, quite impressive for a mere captain. After hearing the bounty of Kobe, some of the pirates wonder, the marine at captain rank are only worth one star and has bounty of 100 million berries. This reward has been put on Kobe heads by Cross Guild, due to his reputation of marine hero. The attention shifted to the giant skull of Hachinasu Island, a truly astonishing sight as the skull itself began to speak. It says that he's feeling tickling sensation on his left side of the chest. It's right around where they keep the unsold slaves. He suddenly realizes that the slaves must be escaping. After hearing this, some of the pirated they started to think they could go wild and do whatever they like to do with the slaves and other prisoners. But they were warned by the giant skull. He said, quit being bloodthirsty. We need all of them alive, including Kobe. And they have to follow his order. Otherwise, he will inform all this to Blackbeard. And that giant skull found out to be none other than Avalo Pizarro who consumed the Shima Shima no My Devil Fruit, meaning he can now merge with the island itself, allowing him to see, feel, and hear everything that transpires on the island. On the other side, we see Kobe helping other slaves acting as a decoy, showing his selflessness and gain the gratitude of others. Scene shifts to the commanders of the Blackbeard Pirates were Shuryu of the Rain, Avalo Pizarro, and Vasco Shot sitting inside the giant skeleton. According to Shuryu, Pizarro can easily catch Kobe, but Pizarro hesitate to do so due to Blackbeard will get mad at him because of causing causing too much damage. We see Vasco Shot who ate Glug Glug fruit. He was floating on a bubble. Vasco Shot said, can I go there? However, Bizarro is curious about Vasco Shot's intentions. Vasco Shot discloses his strategy to set ablaze the entire town, preventing any escape. But Bizarro wasn't happy with his plan. They have recently finished fixing up repair of the rocky port. Vasco Shot was sure he'll do a better job than Sen One Wolf. Then we see the giant titanic captain of Blackbeard Pirate's colossal battleship San Juan Wolf, who was in the midst of sleep and he ate the big big fruit. In the next panel we see plan of Kobe act as bait was working fine as most of the pirates were chasing after him. But Kobe was struggling to get rid of pirates while running with the iron ball in his hand. But Kobe is trying to buy as much as time so that everyone can set sail. We got to know that Perona was the one who freed Kobe. In return, Perona asked Kobe for help to free Moria, who was also imprisoned in the inner prison. Despite seeing the situation, Kobe joined forces with the pirates. As Kobe was running, he heard voices that three marines are attacking the port, and these marines seems to be strong. But Kobe was got ashamed after hearing this that marines are here to save him. In the next scene, we see the port where the marines had arrived. The marines were overpowering the pirates. Every pirate attack, including gunshots, fails to have any impact on the three marines. But somehow one of the pirates succeed in chopping the head of marine with his sword. The same marine whose head was chopped of after a few seconds began to regenerate, leaving the pirate's surprise. The pirate soon realizes that they must be up against a loja user. Then all of a sudden one of the pirate notices that the building is moving. However, the other pirate disagrees, remarking, You must be drunk. Shortly thereafter, two pirates observe a woman using her whip to command the building to continue moving. This woman is identified as Rear Admiral Kujaku, a member of the Sword Group and the granddaughter of Marine Vice Admiral Tsuru. It is unveiled that she has consumed the whip whip fruit making her taming human. She called the two men cute, calling them bit closer to break them in. In the next panel, we see Kobe was surrounded by pirates, all aiming guns at him. As the pirates attempt to fire bullets from their guns, what emerges from their guns are flowers, not bullets. 
Some of the pirates were entirely captivated by the beauty before swiftly regaining their composure and questioning the situation. Kobe then realizes it was a Navy HQ commander Hibari who did this. She is a snipper who uses Vegapunk weapons called GP Flower that turn bullets' gun power into flowers. She was sitting on the rooftop telling her senior Kobe to make his way over to her. Hibari inquired of Kobe whether he was hungry, as she had prepared a packed lunch for him. Hibari updated an individual about Kobe's safety and inquired about their status. The response confirmed readiness, prompting the transition to the next phase of the operation. And the person Hibari spoke was Rear Admiral Prince Gruz, and he's a member of S.W.O.R.D. The prince wields the Goo Goo Fruit abilities, earning the alias Clayman. He is the one behind the creation of the Golem Men. Prince Guru confirmed that all stages set aim right for the middle. In the next panel, we see Tashigi confirming they are ready, how Meppo urged everyone to hold on tight. Meanwhile, a furious Garp can be seen erupting into laughter. Ships then takes off into the air like Thousand Sunny towards the island. People on the island got shocked seeing the battleship flying in the sky defying gravity. No one could believe their eyes, including Kobe. We get to see unbelievable believable sight everyone was shocked by the appearance of single man standing on the deck who's laughing maniacally. The pirates trapped in the midst attempt to flee, but it doesn't take them long to realize that the enigmatic figure on board the ship is none other than the legendary marine hero, Garp. Garp's presence sends shivers down the spines of certain pirates, motivating them to make a desperate attempt to flee the island. However, they soon discover that there is no route of escape within the plaza. Garp presence even make Blackbeard Titanic captain serious. Suddenly, Garp leaps from his battleship, his voice thundering as he berates them for kidnapping Kobe who represents the future of the Marine. Garp charges his fist with formidable energy, unleashing a devastating attack named Galaxy Impact. This mighty punch decimates the entire village below, leaving a path of destruction in its wake. The impact not only obliterated the expansive region but also sent pirates flying. Garp seems furious with smirking smile on his face and clenching his fist. Battleship still soaring through the sky it was unclear where exactly his battleship would land, causing concern among the inhabitants of Pirate's Island. Prince Cruz makes use of his Devil Fruit ability to land the ship carefully without causing any destruction. Garp also landed successfully in from of his battleship, but landing wasn't exactly a smooth ride for those on board like the Tashigi and Helmeppo, who are clearly holding on for dear life. Meanwhile, the pirates were agitated and complaining what Garp did to them. Garp was standing beside his ship wearing the pirates. If you do anything, there will be more casualties. Garp, despite having just decimated the overwhelming majority of the island forces with a single punch, was surprisingly disappointed and frustrated in himself because of his performance. After listening to Garp words, nearby standing pirates couldn't believe their ears. Kobe and Hibari behind him as he called out to Garp. After seeing Kobe, Garp was relieved that his precious student is still alive and well. While back on the Helmeppo crying out in joy that Kobe is still alive, Hujaku and Prince Cruz were standing together. Hujaku says Garp sure is a naughty boy running wild like that, while Cruz was more focused on the words that Garp shares regarding K. Kobe that Kobe is the future of Marines. Cruz claimed that he can't let Kobe get ahead of him. Hujaku then appreciate the bond shared by Kobe and Garp calling them cute. There were other Marine on the ship calling Kobe. Then Kobe notices that Tashigi was on board and Kobe was surprised that she was also among the forces that came to save him. Even Tashigi was a non-sword member. Hibari steps in, expressing concern that Kobe remains at risk due to his shackles, warning that he could meet a grim fate if he continues to run while restrained. As just then Garp's eyes got wide open, as we know Garp is good observation hacky user he might have sensed something. Then suddenly even anyone could notice Hibari called for help but anyone could do anything Hibari was turned solid frozen. Then we see Kobe and Kujaku cried out loud for their comrade. Seeing this it made Garp furious. Suddenly we see a appearance of none other than former Marine Admiral Kuzan who joined forces with Blackbeard Pirates. Garp and Kobe says Kuzan name loud. While holding frozen Hibari, Kobe desperately demand Kuzan to unfreeze Hibari. The unexpected turn of events led to a wave of cheers among the other pirates. Their spirits lifted as they enthusiastically rallied behind Kuzan. According to Kuzan, it'd be a bad look if he let Kobe to escapes while Blackbeard is away. In this scene, Garp seems to be conflicted and incredibly serious. From here we get a flashback of Kuzan reason for joining Blackbeard Pirates. I will be covering the entire flashback in upcoming videos. We see Kuzan thinking of the past. 
Garp then call out loud Cusin giving him three orders, first to unfreeze Hibari, second let them take Kobe, and third get back in his marine uniform. In the next panel we see Cusin is officially revealed to be the 10th Titanic captain of Blackbeard Pirates. Cusin readied himself for the impending battle, remarking on Garp's unwavering straightforwardness, something that Cusin loved about the Garp and for that very reason that he refused to follow any of those orders. Cusin has set up his mind how he wants to live his life. After saying all this, Cusin then launches an attack called Ice Ball and completely freezing old man Garp. Cusin approaches this battle with utmost seriousness. For Garp to emerge victorious, he would be forced to make the difficult choice. It would take him to killing his number one protege in order to save his new favorite one. But Garp break the ice easily because of his immense powerful hacky. Garp recall telling Cusin to live in the now launching himself faster than Cusin could even react. Then Garp grabbing Cusin from his face telling Cusin that only weakling lose their way then Garp slams Cusin to the ground, unleashing another new attack called Blue Hole, which sent Cusin deep beneath the earth. We have taken to ship scrapyard of Navy Branch G1 headquarter, where we discovered the training routine of Garp and Cusin. They used this battleship as punching bag, but for this intense training Garp had a special rule for this training of theirs no devil fruit abilities were allowed while using this battleship bag and not even hacky abilities were allowed. After learning all this we were again taken back to Hachinasu. First what we get to see that San Juan Wolf had crashed into the sea. However, his size prevented him from fully submerging. Garp was the one who did this to San Juan Wolf and making other pirates fear. Being devil fruit user San Juan Wolf exposed to seawater now it's difficult for him to come out of water by himself. So other pirates finding a way to remove him from water and bring him to the surface before he dies from a lack of oxygen. Vasco shot taunts Garp's revered status as a legendary hero. After taking a shake shot, he then fired a fiery breath at the Garp. To protect himself, Garp lifted up trio pirates and used them as shield against the attack. After the initial strike, Vasco's shot persisted in unleashing a continuous stream of fire from his mouth. In response, Garp resorted to capturing additional pirates, using them as living barriers to shield himself. Afterward, Garp throws each pirates in different direction which caused fire around. This action incites Avalo Pizarro's anger as he berates Garp for seemingly endangering Pirate Island with his actions. This thing bothered other pirates present there as well if Blackbeard find his island in such a way, then he will kill them. From here scene shifted to Garp ship where Kujaku informed Garp that the formerly captured slaves and wounded people all had on board. Aboard the ship, Captain Tashigi attends to Hibari, urging to get a hold of herself. Those on board would be told to carefully treat the frozen people. Meanwhile, other female people aboard were concerned about the safety of Captain Kobe. Kujaku then confirmed that they are ready for departure. After hearing this Garp shout Kobe, Helmeppo and Gruz that they are done here, and it's time to go. All three agreed to Garp's order. Garp even says that Hachinasu lives up to its reputation, and there is no end their reinforcement. In the next panel we see Cusin again raising and he says that he will not let Garp leave. Seeing the current situation how Meppo regret his decision to not leave with the others. In a situation like this Prince Gruz asks Garp if he is the future of the Marine too. But Garp didn't give an attention to Gruz's words. Instead, he recognized his former protege's desire to continue fighting. In addition, Kobe warned everyone that they can't underestimate Titanic captains. Garp then commanded his remaining man to head straight to the coast from there you all be fine. Garp followed this up by telling them not to die and all three agreed, but while running Kobe heard a scream of a woman asking for help. Kobe believed that they still have hostage. Kobe then turned around to save her and thought that they almost left her on the island. Prince Cruz warned Kobe that this is a trap. Pirate woman then gave a smile, but Kobe could notice the swordsman Shuryu attacked Kobe. Despite his invisibility, Garp detects Shuryu using his observation hacky. Swiftly, he positions himself in front of Kobe, causing him to stumble and fall. But Shuryu's sword pieced through Garp abdomen making him bleed. Seeing this, Kobe couldn't believe his eye what just happened. Garp then prepared a mighty fist, unleashing it upon Shuryu with tremendous force that shattered the very ground beneath them. Shuryu appeared battered and bloodied yet strangely amused. Garp recognized him to be the troublemaker from the impel down. Kobe realized that Shuryu was invisible because of his devil fruit ability. The pirates around were very pleased to see the Shuryu and he even managed to weaken Garp. Both Gruz and Helmeppo cried out loud for Garp, but Garp insisted them to go to the ship he is fine don't worry about him. Kobe exclaimed in distress, realizing that everything had befallen Garp because of him. Garp shouted at Kobe not to be so full of himself sure you target was him from the beginning. Group of pirates came rushing in believing they now have a chance at taking him down and thought Garp is weakened. Killing him is ticket to good fortune for them. The cross guild had set for Vice Admiral Garp was three crown which is worth three billion berries. Cusin rushing toward his target. He told Small Fry to out of his way. Even if you bind both arms and legs of Grap, 
Weakling like you are no match for him. Kuzan ready his attack name Ice Glove rushing forward. Garp continued to smile remembering his past day. How Garp and Kuzan get along as teacher and student. Back to present a Koji express that Garp had raised quite the troublesome enemy. Garp then remind his disciple that you're excommunicated calling him bone-headed pupil. After exchange of word, they punch each other with hacky and fused fist and it's huge this time not holding back from either side. The result of that clash was catastrophic both were sent flying back at great distance, and we see Kobe cried out for Vice Admiral Garp. Garp is on the ground not looking good. From their Avalo Pizarro tell the marines that their hope of escaping were slim to none this is Hachinasu the island of pirates you should not have poked it otherwise tons of pirates will come out. He then taunts them by saying if you believe the escaping ship was safe. Then he'd tell them not to underestimate the power of his devil fruit. On board Hibari finally come to her senses worrying about Kobe. She felt that it's her fault that she was in the way. Kijaku offers reassurance that others will arrive shortly and expressing relief over Hibari's well-being. Just then two of the marines on ship noticed something approaching them. It was Avalo Pizarro who was mocking them by saying that when you will read that everything will be related to Blackbeard this and Blackbeard that, and our name will be highlighted too. The headline for tomorrow newspaper would be this the renowned Garp accompanied by young elite troops who attempted to rescue the hero of the Marine Kobe were tragically exterminated at Pirate Island by the terrifying power of the Avalo Pizarro fourth titanic captain of Blackbeard Pirates. We see a giant arm come out of island and it begins dropping down at the ship. This made Kobe making him panic. He begged Pizarro not to do this because the ship carries innocent civilians. Garp on ground called out Kobe that he should not lose his composure regardless of the circumstances he had. The many marines aboard the ship were terrified by what they saw a massive hand that had sprouted from the island was moving toward them. They tried to intercept that giant hand with cannonball but it also not effective, so that they couldn't even manage to make a scratch. Tashigi then told everyone to get ready to abandon the ship. As a marine their first priority is to protect the civilians. Rear Admiral Kujaku couldn't believe her eyes seeing this overwhelming power. On the island the situation was favoring Garp and company. Helmepo and Gru stood their ground against the encroaching pirates' forces. While Kobe remained in a state of panic, the lives of hundred marines and civilian were in danger if that hand gets the ship. They called out to Garp wondering what they should do. Garp with a smile on his face told his young student that they will be just fine. After hearing Garp words they all three couldn't believe their ears. Garp even says that they should prepare themselves since he would be giving them an opening, giving them a straight instruction. He says that Kobe will destroy the giant hand and break it apart. Kobe wonders if he can even do anything against the giant hand. Garp ordered Prince Cruz to protect the ship from any falling debris. And lastly Helmepo's job is to make sure that no one gets in their way. Garp then conclude that they must able to make a decision in an instant. The three of them in the beginning hesitate, but they make up their mind and followed Garp ordered. One of the pirate informed Avalo Pizarro that Kobe and others are making a move. But the pirates considers Kobe, Gruz, and Helmepo are useless without Grap, and they can't do anything. They even mock Kobe over his hero title, considering him merely a brat. Helmepo stood against the fodder pirates, while Kobe and Gruz are rushing forward. Grouse wonder if Kobe has some explosives to destroy that giant hand. But Kobe just said no. All he knew is that he'd need to figure something out for job done. But Kobe's words didn't satisfy Gruz saying what you can do you're up against the hand that's capable of crushing an entire battleship. Firing from a cannon launcher, a pirate shouted that Kobe wouldn't be getting away. Helmepo informed them that they had been spotted. Helmepo followed the cannonball trajectory. Recalling Garp's instructions, Helmepo understood that it was his duty to ensure no one obstructed his comrades. Helmepo then cut that cannonball taking the explosion so that the other two pass. Hearing Helmepo pain it made Kobe worries, but Gruz insisted Kobe to not look back. Somehow, despite his wounds, Garp manages to rise to his feet surrounded by lossy pirates. Cusin wonders, with those severe wounds, where Garp is heading. While smiling, Garp says these wounds are just a scratch. After hearing this, Cusin admitted that he was worrying for nothing. In an instant, moving with lightning fast speed, Garp delivers a punch to Cusin, leaving him no time to grasp the situation, and labels him as naive. Garp the dashed forward colliding with building after building moving upward towards that giant skull. Avalo Pizarro was in shock. Smile never left Garp face as he ready conqueror hacky infused fist, smashes the giant skull with Galaxy Divine. Garp practically split the face of the island in two. None of the pirates could believe their eyes what just happened. Wonder if that was truly just a punch. Avalo begins to bleed as the damage he had suffered. As a result of this Avalo lifted the arm that was gonna crush the ship. Then Kobe concluded that this might be the opening Garp must be talking about. Gruz wondered what Kobe is about to do. Kobe promises Gruz he will answer what he is going to do and live up to the expectation of Garp. 
Kobe then left off into the air moving forward. Avalo, who is holding his broken skull with his hand, exclaim in anger he will not give up that easily, and watch Garp what I am about to do next. Kijaku and other marine looks in terror. In the next panel we see Garp still remain in air after that crazy attack and remembering time from past. About Kobe training journey, the pirates present their notice Kobe walking on air moving towards that giant hand. The pirates, in the midst of their laughter, taunt Kobe that his hero title has gotten into his head and they believe Kobe couldn't do anything against that giant hand. But Garp has big smile on face believing in Kobe's abilities. Avalo chuckled, taunting Kobe, compared to my enormous hand, you resemble a mere ant. Watching this made Hibari feared for Kobe's safety. Kobe prepared himself. While Avalo says watch closely how he destroys the battleship and you will see the terrible sight all the people on board the ship will scream towards their deathbed. And even if they somehow manage to escape and jump into sea, then Kuzan will freeze them all. Kijaku feared the worst and told everyone to jump into the sea. They believe this is the only option we have and can't do anything against the giant hand. After this we see Kobe charging his fist thinking if all the people he needed to protect otherwise they will die because of him. Later then Kobe unleashes his mighty punch named Honesty Impact, and this impact so dynamic that it destroys the giant hand. The pirates standing there couldn't believe their eyes. This attack make Avalo cried out loud in pain. Tashigi either couldn't believe this is real. Other side Hibari praises Kobe how amazing he is. Marine aboard the ship are cheering for Kobe and wondered what about the falling debris. Garp lying on ground cried out loud in laughter, while Helmippo cried with pride how unreal is Kobe. Gruz was shocked to see that Kobe has grown this far. Kobe also got wounded while delivering that attack and he began to fall. Gruz then prepared a massive web and was successful for stopping the falling rubble from hitting the ship. Helmeppo run as fast as he could to save Kobe from falling. Helmeppo then grabs Kobe while having tear in his eyes, says how incredible Kobe was. According to Helmeppo that giant arm was the size of a mountain. You just destroyed it with just a single punch. Marion on the ship begin to celebrate and they thanked Prince Gruz for saving them. One of the marines said we just needed to vice Admiral Garp to make his way to the ship so that they can set sail. Tashigi received a call on transponder snail from Garp their mission to save Kobe has been accomplished. Tashigi also confirmed by saying yes sir and told Garp to make his way as quick as possible. Instead Garp commanded all of them to withdraw form Hachinasu immediately. He will find a way. The most important thing for him is safety of all marines. He then asked if they finally understood his lessons from the past. But Kobe told Prince Gruz to turn the ship. Garp then continue his speech that this event will one day be known as a threat to all pirates. So most important thing is they keep moving forward. Garp's words brought tears to Gru's eyes. We see Garp lying on ground and ice sprouting from his chest. Buzz still having laugh on his face surrounded by the Blackbeard pirates continues his word and said to all the marine they are the future. Then cut the call. Tuzan head was lowered and eye were not shown. So this is the end of Garp and Marine vs. Blackbeard pirates. Thank you all for staying till the end. I kindly request your support to achieve my goal of reaching 1000 subscribers this year. Please show your love and encouragement by hitting that red subscribe button.